Amen, amen. Okay, let's give a round of applause to John and the rest of the Team Challenge team. Here you are, brother. All right, thank you very much. Amen. I'm going to stay right here if that's okay. All right? Well, actually, maybe I need a little height. Yeah, there we go. Uh, my name is John Awad. I'm with Teen Challenge of Arizona. I was formerly with Teen Challenge of Minnesota. Uh, but I came down here. God brought me here. In fact, the Holy Spirit brought me here. And um, I just didn't get it up there. I, that was my wilderness. That was actually my Egypt was up in Minnesota. That's where I'm from. I was there since 1979. I went to school there. I learned a lot of bad habits there. And uh, God brought me out of that misery and brought me here. I suffered from a cocaine addiction for 41 years, and it was all up there. It started when I got there, and it, it stopped when I, when, I, when I got on the plane and came down to Arizona with a one-way ticket. So this is the place of redemption for me. Thank you, uh, Pastor, for the song today, Redeemed by Daddy Weave, Big Daddy Weave. That is a, a song that I used to sing as a soloist at Teen Challenge. And, uh, you know, I'm not a great singer or anything, but... Uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I did a pretty good job with it. Um, that song really meant a lot to me. I end up shedding a tear or two uh, because it's He set us free, and uh, I'm not the man I used to be. It's um, that's a really big deal. So, um, being redeemed is a really big uh, is a big part of of coming to Christ. So today is the day of Pentecost, as we all know, and uh, Acts 4:31. This is important to me. It's also, um, it's Acts 4.31 says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke with, spoke the word of God with boldness. And so, and that's my prayer today, is that we speak the word of God with boldness. Um, I ask the Holy Spirit to come into my heart to uh, lead and guide this ministry today. Today is the day where the whole church of God started, really. Um, the Holy Spirit descended. In Ch Acts chapter 2, it says that the Holy Spirit descended on, on the disciples' heads, like tongues of fire. And from there, uh, they were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit transcended it beyond those guys, the 12 disciples. Um, and, it, and it actually... Uh, manifested itself into the rest of the world. All of mankind had access to the Holy Spirit through the power of Jesus Christ in the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. So today is a really important day. This is, this is the day where, where the Spirit of God reigns in each one of us, lives inside of us. The power, power of Jesus Christ is within us. And so um, that's the message today on the day of Pentecost. So at Teen Challenge... Um, we hope that we that we help people learn how we help men learn how to be guided by the Spirit, and uh, that's what happened to me. I was I learned how to how to how to live in the moment and allow God to to rest on me. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit was able to manifest within me, and it wasn't until that point where I, I just I every part of my life was a mess, and it wasn't until I was I allowed God to indwell in me that. I could have the power that rested in me to uh, to do the work that the Holy Spirit. A lot of stuff. Life is difficult enough, and if you're a drug addict like I was, it's really difficult to man to to uh, manage life without the power of the Holy Spirit. So, um, anyway, I'm I'm really glad to be here. Uh, let me tell you just a little bit about Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge is a ministry that started in 1958. Uh, we started in 1958 in New York. There was a minister, a pastor from rural Pennsylvania. His name is uh, David Wilkerson. And David uh, saw the need to come to the rescue of some teenage boys that were in trouble legally. They were being tried as adults in a courtroom in New York. And he came to their aid and talked to the judge and had them um, he started a program called Teen Challenge where the, instead of going to be tried as adults and being sent to prison, these... Uh, these youths were actually given the opportunity to um, to work with this pastor, David Wilkerson, and they, they went to the center called Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge was birthed that day, 
And um, it was a place where they could go and, and re have recreation, play basketball, learn the word of God. That was actually part of the whole program. As David Workelson taught them the word of God, and they all, uh, most of them, end up converting to uh, their lives. They end up changing their lives and became Christians. So, And that was done by the power of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't anything that maybe David Wilkerson did or the judge did. It was the power of the Holy Spirit within them that actually changed those lives. And uh, from there, about seven or eight years later, Teen Challenge already made its way across the entire country. And in 1965, Teen Challenge of Arizona started. We had one place, and there's um, now there's five centers in Teen Challenge of Arizona. We've got one. We used to have a place in Yuma. It was for Teen, teen Boys Center, but that's been closed for some time. Um, we have five centers in Arizona. We've got the Tucson Men's Center, which is where we're from. And we cover, for the state, we cover most of Arizona, the southern part of Arizona. So we've got a large territory. Yuma includes that. We're included with Yuma. So we're, we cover this area from the Tucson Center. We've got a center in Phoenix. We've got the place in New River, which is right north of Phoenix. That's where people do their training. So our guys, these guys right here, who have dedicated their lives to Christ for a full year, 13 months to be exact, and they've, uh, they're, they're, they've come into our center. They're, they're, these guys are bold enough right here. Why don't you stand up, you guys? All the Teen Challenge guys. Come on, Tony. Yep. These guys have dedicated their lives to, uh, to one year of just, that's what they do. Is they, every day they study the Bible. They, they get an education in the Bible that, that is unsurpassed. It's like going to Bible college. And so um, these are true disciples right here. And uh, they also, you can't see them, but they all have tongues of fire on their heads right now. <laughs> so they're, um, it's a, it requires a lot of commitment, a lot of dedication. And, um, and I commend all you guys for that. That's, it's a huge commitment. And it isn't until we commit to doing something like this that we can really give our hearts to Jesus. So um, that's what it takes. And that all the 12-step programs out there, all the different programs that are, that are designed to help people to achieve recovery and uh, arrest drug addiction and alcoholism, it, it's, it's all through the power of God. Even in the 12-steps, they say, uh, these are the steps we took, it's, and it requires God to do those. In fact, the steps are designed to help people understand who God is. And so... Um, and we do it through the power of, of the Holy Spirit at Teen Challenge. We teach people how to become disciples and think of God first and think of others before themselves through ministry, through volunteering in the community, through all kinds of stuff, reading the Bible. And uh, it takes daily discipline, which is where the word disciple came from. So fast forward a little bit here. on this. I was talking about how Teen Challenge was formed in, in Arizona in 1965. We've got three centers for men, as I mentioned. We've got two centers for women. One of them is in Casa Grande, and it's for, uh, for women and their children, their families. And so we help everybody. We f help all adults. We help uh, teens. And we help, uh, we got a teen center in also, and it's called Springboard, Home for Girls. It's in Tucson as well. So we help people of all ages. We help adults. We help families. We help adolescents. And um, right now, there's about 275 uh, centers in the United States for Teen Challenge. There's also, around the world, there's about 2,000. So it's a global ministry. And uh, we don't take any funding from insurance or government grants. All of our funding comes from individuals, churches, organizations, clubs. And uh, so that's what we're doing here. We're doing what's called a ministry team. And in, in all of our ministry teams, we promote our our, our programs and our, and our centers. And we talk about um, who, our, who our clients are. We'll we talk about um, what God can do in the in the program that we we offer through our five centers here. We will tell you what God has done in our lives, and God has basically. I thought for a long time that God turned my world upside down, but after going through Teen Challenge, I realized that He turned it right side up. So, and and that was just once again through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, um, like I said, we don't take any funding from that. Uh, we don't turn any away, anybody away for for lack of funding. So our program can basically basically be free for people. We most of the times we were asking for a thousand dollars for 
an intake fee, and then there's um, an application fee, which is either $100 for residents and 200 for non-residents. But uh, we don't, still don't turn people away if they don't have the funding. I went through free of charge, just so you know. And so the Teen Challenge still accepts everybody no matter what. And so if, if, if you know somebody in your family who needs help, uh, we're here and we care. And, we, and we've got, I just want to let you know that we've got a few things. Connor, would you hand me the cross there? Here I go. So th we've got crosses that we sell. And this is a wooden one. We also have, oh, we've got a glass one too. The glass one is, these are like, uh, they're, they're made out of refurbished materials, broken glass. They're made whole again, and then they're stained and colored and made really pretty with jewels and all kinds of stuff. And that's what God does with each one of us. Each one is, there's never any cross that's the same as the last one. These are all different. And so every time uh, you see one of these crosses, it's got a little bit different look to it. All individuals, just like us. God restores us just like, just like he does with these crosses, like we do with these crosses, and makes them whole. This is a little bit more popular cross. This is the um, wooden crosses. We've got different colors. We've got, these are actually made out of refurbished pallet wood, most of them. And so they're broken pieces of wood. They're put together, made really beautiful. Refurbished uh, barbed wire as well. It's all re reconstructed stuff that's made out of broken materials and put whole again. Aren't they pretty? And these are $20 to help our ministry, and they go directly to our center. All right, so enough on that. One of the things we do, I'm in the public relations department, and so my job is fundraising and, uh, and doing outreach. But we have a gentleman here named Connor Conine that is our sponsorship person, and if you wanted to work with students individually or you wanted to help sponsor somebody, and that's another way you can contribute and help out Teen Challenge, is it goes directly to, to sponsor one of the students. They'll communicate with you. At, uh, I'll let Connor tell you all about it, okay? So Connor, why don't you come on up? <coughs> Test one, two. Okay. Good morning, New Mountain Church. I love this church. Um, we were on the way up here, and I, and I was talking to John, and I was talking to, to Pastor, and I said, there's something about this church. You know when the congregation and the pastor really knows the Lord. And every time I come in here, I get hit with the spirit of the Lord. The worship is awesome, and you guys are the friendliest people in Arizona. Um, <clears throat> so I am a product of Teen Challenge. Uh, the Lord used Teen Challenge to restore my life. Um, you guys were talking about and singing about in worship, the captives being set free. And that's what we specialize in at Teen Challenge, is offering a place for captives to come in and allow the Lord to come in and set them free. Um, so I am the student sponsorship coordinator. A little bit about student sponsorship. It's basically, it's an opportunity for you as individuals to partner with the guys that are going through the program. Um, so what you do, it's a, it's a, 40 mo a $40 a month uh, donation. But, so what you do is you interact with the students on a monthly basis. Um, you can email them. You can write them letters. We can set up video calls. Um, they'll basically, they'll tell you how their day's going, how their life's going, uh, which staff members they can't stand. Um, if you notice some reoccurring ones, we can, we can uh, report that, but it's okay. But um, yeah, so student sponsorship, it, I believe in student sponsorship. Um, it, it's an opportunity where some people, they just need somebody to believe in them. Um, some of the guys we get coming into our program, they come from great upbringings. They have a supportive family. Other guys, not so much. And so, like, if you're if you're a male, if you're a manly, you know, figure, that can, you can serve as a father figure for someone that hasn't had that before. Um, same same with women. Um, if you're if you're a mom, like, just that tender love, that heart, that can go so far in a man's life and recovery. Um, and and I firmly believe in it. Um, you know, I, I came through the program. Uh, the Lord restored my relationship with my family. Uh, I'm about a year away from graduating with a master's degree. So the Lord has done a work in my life. Um, and uh, and the, ma the majority of that goes to the Lord. All of it goes to the Lord. But really just having somebody to believe in me and say, hey, you're worth more than this. W what are you doing? Quit, quit throwing your life away. Just shake some sense into me. And uh, that, that's the gist of student sponsorship. So if you, want, if you want to inquire any more information, I will be located at the small table uh, when we go out for food. There's like a really big, like, extravagant table. That's John, and you have like a little table. So I'll be at the little one. But I'd love to talk to you guys. And I, thank you so much for having us. I love you guys. So. Thank you, Connor.
Yeah, Connor is, um, he's a rising star in our company. I'm going to say that. And, uh, you know, he's, um, he had his difficulty, but I'll tell you what, though. If you meet him, when I met him, I just, I would have never guessed that he had any struggles whatsoever. So um, what, a, what a great man he is. And so um, I honor you, Connor. Thank you. Good man. So, uh, you know what, it's, we wanted to, to do some testimonies today and talk, talk about what God has done in our lives. And so I think at this time we'll, uh, instead of, you don't want to hear me talk, why don't you, we hear from the students here. And we'll talk about what God is doing in their lives and how, what life was like for them beforehand, what life is at, like, te- at Teen Challenge and, and what, what they're expecting in the future. So first I'm going to start out with uh, Brian. Okay. Yeah. So by the way, these guys don't know they're coming up. So we're being led by the Holy Spirit here. So it's, um, I hope you're not disappointed, Brian. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Brian, I want to ask you, uh, what was it like before you got here? What brought you to Teen Challenge? And, um, and, and well, well, we'll start there. Uh, before I got the Teen Challenge, I was pretty, pretty lost. Like, uh, I had my job taken away by the pandemic. I used to be a caregiver. And uh, I don't know, I just felt like I, I felt like I had no purpose, really. So I tried to find it by drinking, which was not the case. But, yeah, before I came to Teen Challenge, I was basically just getting drunk every night, not really knowing where I was going. So what um, what's it like at Teen Challenge? You like what you're where you're at, and and do you um, do you have any any um, favorite parts of the program that you'd like to share with us? Um, it sucks not being with my family, but I mean I have a new one. I love my brothers, every last one of them. Amen. You guys are amazing, Amen. and uh, our staff like John, you know, every just it you're it's almost like you're in a prison, but really, <laughs> but like. The camaraderie makes everything amazing. Like, really, it is. It is amazing. I love these guys, 100%. So, um, let's fast forward about a year from now, a year in, in a month. What uh, What does that look like? Do what, it, uh, what do you see in your future? That's a good question. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, sobriety, you know, definitely is one of them. Um, just the month that I've been here, I've definitely came closer to the Lord for sure, and uh, I can really appreciate that. Amen. All right. Thank you, Brianna. So, Brianna is, it came into our program, and, and uh, you know, a lot of times when somebody comes in the program, you kind of know right away if they're going to do well or not, and uh, he's done extremely well, and um, I'm not sure how much he knew the Lord before he got to Teen Challenge, but I know that when he leaves Teen Challenge, he's going to be a man of God, There's and, and that's that. Um, you know, very committed. Um, you know, everything we've asked him to do at Teen Challenge. It's not an easy program. It's a very difficult program. There are a lot of demands. We have what's called program structure. And there's so many things that are both written and unwritten that you just can't do. And it's all to teach people how to live without having some sort of crutch to rely on. Instead of relying on a drug or some kind of chemical or some th- artificial um, we, we try to teach them how to rely on Jesus Christ and uh, to, to go to God first in prayer and, and, and really find out, you know, what's going on. We also try to teach people what their identity is. We really drive home what their identity is, who, who they are in Jesus. And so um, he's doing a really great job and really I, I don't think already his identity is in Christ. There's no question about it. So the next guy I'd like to have come up is... Um, Tony. Tony's a little bit more shy, but we're going we're gonna to get him to talk today. <laughs> so, Tony, uh, how, you, you've, Tony went to the ranch. The ranch is our second phase. It's our training phase. So, Tony, you've been in the program for like a year now, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> and... Uh, so what have you learned at Teen Challenge throughout this whole year? And, um, and, and, and what's, what's next for you starting Monday? Tomorrow. <laughs> you got this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so what was the question again? I guess I guess he didn't uh, learn how to, any new listening skills, but <laughs> no. The question is, um, you've you've been in the program for twelve months, and um, what sort of things have you uh, did you pick up along the way? What's different about Tony now, after twelve months of Teen Challenge that that Tony didn't have before? Well, before I was on fentanyl and I overdosed. That's what got me here to Teen Challenge. Um, so I've been free and clear of fentanyl for one year. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of patience in the program, um, tolerance. Perseverance. He's saying perseverance. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's all I got. All right. Thank you, Tony. All right. So I want to tell you that Tony is going to be a student intern starting tomorrow. That's why I asked that other question. And um, one of the, for me, a big part of my program was becoming an intern, where I was able to work with the students and come alongside of the men and, and, and show them how, what it means, how, how to walk, even though I wasn't really an expert at it, if I, I could show them how to walk as a Christian, how to walk with Jesus. You know, I, for me, it was a very difficult thing to walk with the Lord. I got saved in May 10th, 1996, a long time ago, 27 years ago. And I, and I didn't necessarily walk with Jesus for a long time. It was a process. I didn't just right away become, um, you know, when I was saved, I didn't take it to, fully to heart. It, it took me a while to really walk in this. And so, um, and in fact, it, I didn't, it didn't take for me until, until I, I got into Teen Challenge. And uh, Teen Challenge helped bring me into a place where I was able to commit. And my life verse actually is, is um, Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm no, it's, it's no longer I live in the flesh, but, it's, uh, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And that right there is, it's a hard walk. The hardest thing I've ever done is to walk with Jesus. And it's, um, you know, and there's nothing more miserable than being a carnal Christian. And uh, believe it, I, I, I know. But, um, but Tony's going to have the opportunity to work uh, and come alongside the guys. When It wasn't until I started giving away my recovery and walking alongside that I was able to really, really fully commit and surrender each day. So this is one of the things that Teen Challenge offers is that true surrender. So Tony, how do you, what's your prospect? What, what do you think about working at Teen Challenge as an intern? Full time? How do you, how do you feel? How, what, what's going to happen when you come alongside the guys on Monday, tomorrow? It's going to be well. I've got to know the guys. It's really great. I hope they treat me well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. So, yeah, a big part of the program is doing that. And that's one of the things we offer. So many, all, of, all the guys that go through the program have the opportunity to intern as well. And uh, they'll be able to come alongside the guys. And, and it brings the, this whole walk to a different level. So, um, uh, Thank you, Tony, very much. We appreciate it. So um, I'm not sure how much time we have to do these um, testimonies, but I'm going to have at least one more. Okay, good. Two more. Perfect. Well, why don't we have uh, Dominic come up next? So I want to tell you about, I went through the program twice, once as a, in the full program, and then the, re the next time I went through the program was through in restoration. And it wasn't because I didn't, I didn't learn anything, it was because I, I guess that maybe I'm a little bit of a slow learner, but I, I missed something along the way, and it was that commitment part of it. I just uh, didn't fully surrender, and so um, it was five years later that I ended up coming to Arizona to do my restoration where I was able to solidify my, my position with the Lord. And, uh, you know, the thing to think about is that this is a daily thing. When, when working with, um, and, and I think you'll probably agree with me, is that every day, if I don't, if I don't go through the process of surrendering and uh, giving my life to God when I wake up in the morning through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, if I don't do that every day, I'm, 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 I could be a dead man. So, uh, but I wanted to say that Dominic, is um, 
we love Dominic at Teen Challenge. He's got a wonderful heart. Uh, but Dominic um, stumbled, and he had to come back to the program. And uh, so I'm going to give you the microphone. I'd like you to describe um, what it was like before you, uh, while you were in your addiction, and and what what the process of of coming to Jesus has been like for you, coming into Team Challenge and now doing restoration. Okay. So my name is Dominic. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, you know, I kind of. I was surrounded on drugs at a really young age. My mom was a uh, severe addict. And uh, by the time I was 14, I was using methamphetamine and heroin. By the time I was 16, I was shooting up. And, um, you know, it was everything that came with that lifestyle. You know, countless uh, trips to the hospital, overdoses. Um, I've been shot three times. And um, I just was fully immersed in that entire lifestyle. Um, I didn't know Jesus, I didn't know who he was, and it wasn't until I went to a shelter in Albuquerque, because I had nowhere else to go, that um, Jesus revealed himself to me. You know, I gave my life to Jesus Christ at that shelter, and um, just like um, John was saying, you know, just because you're saved doesn't mean that you're walking with him every day. And um, I ended up stumbling again. It's been a long process, but um, there was a family member who told me about Teen Challenge of Arizona, and... Um, yeah, it was, it was scary for me. It was scary because I have a son, and I was like, man, I got to go to Team Challenge of Arizona. Um, <laughs> I know I didn't have to, but I, I, I needed something. I know I was going to die if I didn't. And so I came out to Team Challenge of Arizona, and I just want to say one thing real quick. I've been through a lot of institutions, a lot of institutions. And the most beautiful thing about this program is we never talk about the problem drugs. We just talk about the solution, which is Jesus Christ. You know, and um, <clears throat> it's really it's really filled me up with a lot of hope. Um, after I graduated the program, I, I was doing well. I was in a Christian um, sober living house, but then I tried to go on my own again, and I took the steering wheel from Jesus, and um, I started living life my way, living in sin again. And uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't living on the streets or anything when I came here. But I knew where I needed to go to to restore my life. That's why it's called restoration. You know, that's why it's called the restoration yeah. program when you come back. And um, you know, so now I'm getting back to uh, connecting with God and uh, just feeling like I have a purpose again. And I truly 100% believe in this program. I've seen miracles. I've seen men's lives change. I've seen miracles in the court systems because of the people who attended this program. It's an amazing place for. Uh, a man to find his purpose, for sure. Amen. Thank you, Dominic. That's good. I appreciate you, man. All right. So, you know, to that, uh, on that note, I, um, you know, the court systems do. They, there's a lot of favor that's given uh, because our program is a really intense program. It's not for everyone, um, but it's for most people, most most men who are willing to commit. And, and but it's, um, I had, a, I had, I had legal stuff over my head when I went to Teen Challenge, and um, it was I was I got a pardon. They kept on continuing my case and continue it until they they wanted to see um, what my progress was. So every month, a representative from Teen Challenge would send a report to my probation officer, which I didn't know about. But when I got to court, about 12 months into it, I was uh, pardoned because they knew that I was doing well in the program. So. It's, that's that's one of the benefits. So I think I think I think legal system and, and our our the community recognizes Teen Challenge is really a outstanding um, source of strength for for most people that struggle with addictions. So uh, finally, I'd like to have um, our man from Oregon come up here. So <laughs> this is Greg. Greg is uh, a real asset to our program, and he's a pretty good cook too. So. Uh, <laughs> So uh, Greg has been in the program for how long? Two months. Two months, okay. And, um, you know, it's, I think Greg has been, he's, he's been able to get back to doing some things in his life that really gave him strength. He exercises a lot. He, he studies the Bible every day and, and has his daily um, disciplines. And, and so um, this is what I've recognized is that you're really strong right now. And, um, and I know that you're going to continue to be strong, but why don't you explain what it is that you're learning at Teen Challenge in order to keep you on the right path? 
Well, what I'm basically learning is that my walk with God is more important than, than my walk by myself. Um, I'm a very stubborn person, and it took me 42 years to figure out that this was the right path. Amen. Yeah. All right. Do you, um, what do you see yourself doing after you finish the program? I'm going to intern. I'm going to come back. Yeah, I'm going to come back for the six-month intern. Amen. Absolutely. Good deal. Yeah. Tucson? Yeah, Tucson Center, most likely. Amen. Yeah. Right. So when he says, I'm going to come back, that means he's coming back from the ranch, yeah. which means he's going to the ranch. So it's yeah. a good thing. So, um, so what, do you, um, what, are, what is your favorite part about Teen Challenge right now? Um, th that really it's helping me with my faith more than trying to preach about my addictions. You know what I mean? Like, like Dawn brought up, there's nothing about our addictions there. It's about Bible and it's about our walk with Christ and, and learning about Christ. Amen. All right. That's good, Greg. So um, one of the things I want to mention about Greg is that somehow... I don't know why he's the guy that does this, but he's been able to bring a lot of unity into our into our center, which I think is really important. And so, um, how do you feel that um, the Lord is leading you in a way to bring unity to the to the camp at Teen Challenge? Well, I just feel like uh, he's just using me as a leader right now. We have a bunch of younger guys, and and they need somebody to kind of lead them. We got Dominic also, who's been there before, but uh, I don't know. It's just the Lord uses me as that tool. That's not on me. That's on him. Amen. Thank you. I'm glad you give credit where it's due. Thank you, Greg. So um, I'm going to wrap up here, but when we um, leave here, there's a, the, you guys have a new fellowship hall. And so um, I, I think Pastor Jeremy is really happy about this hall. Is I correct? Yeah. There we go. So... Um, we have some tables set up in the in the in that room where you can buy crosses. Um, we've got some other things that are um, like Connor's got his sponsorship table. We have some information here, some literature, but there's also um, we can if you want to stop and talk to us, we'd love to share whatever we can about our program and and any other information you might have questions about. And I just wanted to say uh, we're just so grateful to be here today. This is a house of the Lord, and we're so grateful that we can come here and, and speak freely about our program and, and just share our testimonies with you. And, and uh, we just want you to know we, we, we love you very much here in, in Yuma, the New Mountain Church. This is our second visit here, and I'm sure that we'll be coming back again. And um, we're just so pleased to be part of the New Mountain Church and, and partnering with you guys. And so thank you so much. God bless. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you in the fellowship hall. Thank you. Amen. Pastor Jeremy? Yeah. So, John, I didn't tell them that we have a fellowship hall yet. That's brand new. So. <laughs> you did? Oh, I blew it. Yeah. I was wondering why all the blank faces. Everybody's looking at me like, huh? Everybody's like, where? Like, what are you yeah, talking right. about? Yeah. yeah. So, like John said, we have a new fellowship hall. <laughs> I'm going to give you back the microphone, okay? All right, man. Thank hey, you. I want to call the, uh, I'll call the rest of the guys up, and let's all pray for them. Pray for the Tucson uh, ministry. Let's. Let's just pray over them as New Mountain Church. You guys agree with that? Yeah. Let's, stand, let's stand up and do that. Thank you so much. All right, yeah. Yeah, let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. Man, you're almost as tall as me. I know, that's pretty tall. Yeah, it's like, wow. I want to be your friend. <laughs> All right, let's pray for these guys. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much for these guys. We thank you for their hearts. We thank you for their ministries. We thank you for their testimonies. And Lord, we pray that you would empower these guys in mighty ways, Lord. That the journey in front of them, Lord, you will pave the way. You will remove the obstacles. You will remove the stumbling blocks. I pray just blessing on the Tucson Teen Challenge Ministry, Lord. I pray that you'd bless them in everything they do. I pray that anybody new coming into the program, Lord, I pray that they would be blessed as well. But for these guys right here, Lord, on this stage right here, I pray, Lord, that you'd use them for your ministry, for your will, for your kingdom. Use them in mighty ways, Lord. Empower them. Electrify them. We thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for the work they're doing, and we thank you for the change in their lives. Pray, Lord, again, a blessing on them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Amen, amen guys. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. God bless you guys. God bless you guys.
You know, in the book of Revelation in chapter 12, it talks about uh, our, our enemy that we have. You know, we have an enemy. He is real, unfortunately. You, you can be seated, everybody. Uh, the enemy that we have, he's out to get us. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. He knows how to do it. And unfortunately, our whole uh, mankind has been, you know, dropped into sin because of the serpent in the garden. And so from the beginning, we've always had that enemy that's been tripping us up, that's been hurting us, that's been uh, stealing from us. I think about our futures. And even, the, even Christians, are, our futures can be stolen from us if we let them, you know, if we let the enemy win. And, and, but what's good is that in the book of Revelation chapter 12, it says that, that we overcame, the saints in that book, that they overcame that enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. It is all about Jesus and what Jesus has done in your life. I think some of us are wondering, how are we going to ever share our faith with somebody else? How are we ever going to talk to somebody about Jesus? Uh, I might not know every book of the Bible. I might not know how to memorize Bible verses. Well, hey, you know your story, so tell your story. Tell your story. Tell, tell other people what Jesus has done in your life. Uh, now, caveat, if you don't have a story because Jesus hasn't done nothing in your life, then there's something that you need to work on, <laughs> okay? Because Jesus doesn't just skip over people, okay? If, if you're a believer, if you're following Jesus Christ, I guarantee you God's doing something in your life. Well, what is it? What is it? Think about it. Bring that out. Talk about it to others. Because we can help so many people that we meet. We can help them so greatly by just explaining to them what we've been through. I, I, I get this question all the time as a pastor. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really believe in God because, you know, if God exists, then, uh, then uh, why does bad things happen to good people? I get that question like all the time, like everybody else says. You know, if God's real, why does he allow uh, these bad things to happen? And I think, well, there, there's, there's a lot of times where God is doing something through that bad thing. There's a lot of times where God is putting you through something for a reason. Because when you come out the other side of that problem, either you're stronger or you're more capable to help somebody else who's gone through that same thing. Th there's always a plan and a purpose behind what God does. Uh, now, don't get it wrong. Uh, it's unbiblical to think that God is out of control of any part of all creation. He's in control of all creation. And so because of that, when you go through struggles and you go through problems, there, there's, there's something happening, right? I think we've got the devil on one hand saying, oh, I'm going to mess this guy up. I'm really going to really put some problems on this person. But God's over here thinking, I got a plan and a purpose and all is working out. We, uh, we got this, this unfortunate enemy that's against us, but we got God who's in control of all things. So again, the problems that we go through, either you're becoming stronger or you're being more capable of helping somebody else that's gone through the same thing. So think about this today. What is your story? What is your testimony? What do you have? What is your experiences? That's what I'm going to do this evening is give me and Amy's testimony uh, from the beginning all the way to till, till now. You know, uh, I was born on a rainy day. No, I wasn't, I'm not going to go back that far. Uh, <laughs> but, but our stories are important. So I, that's, that's the main takeaway from today is, is what is your story? What is your testimony? How are you able to explain what you've been through and your experiences that you've, that you've had? How? So today, uh, we're going to, from the offering today, we're going to give a portion of the offering to the Teen Challenge guys. But again, yeah. But again, they're, they're going to have a table set up in the, in the fellowship hall, which is, is technically fellowship hall slash small group hall all slash maybe kids area one day. I don't know. Uh, but we've named it Three Doors Down. Not because I like the band, because I don't. I mean, Kryptonite was kind of cool, but whatever. But no, it's because it's actually Three Doors Down. It's actually Three Doors Down. It's our fellowship hall. We just rented it. We worked out it. We signed the contract. Uh, we've tried to start cleaning it up. But it used to be a tattoo parlor, so there's still a tattoo logo on the window. But hey, we're working it out. I I'm getting a nice, sharp new razor blade on Monday, and I'm taking it off. 
Uh, but uh, that's what we're going to have uh, th- these guys after service. Uh, but again, let's, let's pray over, over our story. Let's pray over what Jesus is doing in our lives. And let's pray for Jesus to open up doors or maybe to, to help us see the path in front of us. And if you don't know Jesus today, then I'd like you to also uh, to, to, to really trust him and follow him and recognize him. These guys have talked about how they've done it their own way for a while, right? Uh, this is my story, too. I've done it my way for a while. And, and you know, I'm not like, uh, who is it? Who, which is the, uh, is it Sinatra that says that? I did it my way. Yeah, whichever, whichever guy, you know, doing it my way don't work, you know. But doing it God's way is how things work. 